Ladies and gentlemen, you are invited to the Grand Theatre of Scientific Hubris. This specific tragic comedy is starring the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or better known by its acronym, ITER, humanity's audacious attempt to play out the story of Prometheus once more. We have good reason to think that we can, once again, steal the fire of the gods. Fusion power, they say, will save us from the energy crises of tomorrow. Yet, as the story unfolds, it begins to resemble not so much a miracle as a tragic comic misadventure. Equal parts ambition, delusion and technical impossibility. Consider this hubris carefully. It does not assert that achieving sustained nuclear fusion in a controlled environment on Earth is impossible. Rather, it argues that even if such contained fusion is achieved, it will still not be feasible to make that energy practically usable. Picture this almost religious hubristic claims, harnessing the very process that fuels the stars, unleashing clean, boundless energy that could power the dreams of civilization. It's the stuff of science delusion more than the stuff of science fiction. Yes, it is a narrative of salvation and technological triumph. But when we descend from the lofty heights of imagination to the unforgiving planes of physics and engineering, reality begins to intrude. First of all, and most fundamentally, we must acknowledge that the sun's glory comes from gravitational forces that are impossible to replicate on Earth. So what do we do? We improvise with the tokamak, a colossal donut-shaped magnetic cauldron designed to cage a plasma hotter than the sun itself. This is exactly where the ITER is, the largest most expensive multinational fusion energy project in the world where hopes burn brighter than the plasma it struggles to contain. The challenge? To tame a tempest of charged particles without letting the sheer scale of energy devour itself or us. The concept of energy gain touted as ITER's raison d'etre requires us to ignore an inconvenient truth. The energy input to maintain and confine this energetic plasma in principle will always exceed what physics allows to be extracted from the reaction and containment system itself. We're spending a fortune to build a cosmic bonfire and the marshmallows might never arrive. To be fair-minded, we have to talk about the ITER's proposed method of energy extraction. We can ask about the vaunted neutrons, those energetic particles said to carry fusion's bounty without going into the details, just like the ITER publications seem to have done in any event. The problem is as simple and obvious for all to see, but more so for specialists in the field of thermodynamics. Because capturing a large enough amount of energy through a neutron flux is about as realistic as catching moonlight in a jar while sitting right next to the sun. The physics and materials needed to absorb and convert this energy without breaking down the needed containment are non-existent because it is contrary to all observed physics. ITER is effectively trying to solve problems described in real physics simply by making politically correct fantasy promises about physics which in principle will never exist in this universe while the clock of reality and the funding keeps ticking. So should we consign the project to history's dustbin of overreach? Not necessarily. ITER represents a triumph of engineering ingenuity, even though it has left useful physics far behind. What if we redefined its purpose while redirecting investments to advance next generation uranium and thorium fission technologies? Common sense physics knows that fission technologies are the only controllable nuclear energy processes available on Earth. It is therefore time to acknowledge that. With abundant, viable, heavy atoms fission-based nuclear energy. We will have the necessary energy available to repurpose ITER's technological marvels, not for terrestrial fusion fantasies, but among other, it can be used as a key tool for large-scale space exploration. The ITER project's massive electromagnetic fields designed for plasma containment could be redirected to shield future spacecraft from deadly cosmic radiation. Imagine a spaceship equipped with an electromagnetic bubble deflecting the hostile radiation and charged particles which currently make space travel prohibitively dangerous for humans. In this way, ITER's promise would not be wasted but repurposed toward a bold, attainable vision. The human race 
reaching for the stars. Aita's greatest legacy may not be energy, but inspiration. Proof that even our missteps can chart a course toward the extraordinary, instead of chasing the ever-elusive grail of fusion power. Let us redirect this prodigious effort toward a dream that matches our capabilities. Protecting humanity as it ventures beyond Earth, the stars may remain untamed, but with Ita's technology, we might finally learn to travel among them safely. So let us celebrate Ita, not as the savior of global energy, but as a bridge to a more achievable and no less glorious frontier. In its failures, as in its successes, lies a tragic comedy of humanity's hubristic creativity and our prideful folly.